Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to review The Mortal Blade by Christopher Mitchell. Corthy Holdfast arrives in the City of Eternal Siege as one of their new champions after being stolen from his home. He must fight alongside the Blades against the never-ending army of Greenbacks. Maddie Jackdaw, a young Blade, is on her last chance. She's given one last posting. If she's thrown out of this one, then she joins the Rats. Her new post will bring her face to face with her deepest fears as a dragon lies, imprisoned and waiting. So I read this as an SBFBO round seven finalist. There are a few more point of view characters than the synopsis suggests and as such we end up with a really good range of viewpoints telling the story. Corthy joins the world as an outsider. He's not from this city so he really has an interest in perspective. He's given to the Blades to fight with them and Unusually for this world, he has an ability that mortals don't normally have. He also seems a bit bemused occasionally, as things don't work quite the same as he expects them to. He's pretty sure that his sister is going to rescue him, and he maintains his hope throughout, but it becomes more and more clear that perhaps he doesn't actually need her to do the rescuing. But he's loyal, and he wants to protect those he's working with. I do think Maggie is my favourite character. I have such a soft spot for characters where you could describe their personality as a bag of knives. She's rude and abrasive and she knows she's on thin ice, but I loved reading her story and how she grew throughout this book. Additionally, we have Daniel graduating as an officer in the city guard. He knows he's spoiled and he has to also navigate high society life. He really just prefer getting on with being an officer. I've got to admit I wasn't a fan of his chapters at first, but as the book progressed he began to rise to the occasion and had more of a hand in directing the plot rather than just reacting things that happen at him. Ayla is a demigod with some really quite interesting powers. She can decide how people perceive her, so if she wants to look like someone else she just decides that's what people see when they look at her. At the start she was a favourite because she is into the action straight away, but as we progressed through the books I did lose a little bit of that initial charm I found. There is a romance involved and I just didn't, I didn't believe in it to be honest, and she's a centuries old character becoming all flustered over a teenager. Then the dragons, loved them, great personalities, great chapters, really loved getting to know them and seeing them in the story. Side characters varied, some good, some really just in and out as the story needed. Hild, for example, was a great side character. Kind of want to read an Adventures of Hild story. One of the things that became apparent really early on was just how easy the writing was to get into. I really enjoyed how this flowed. I enjoyed how some of the history was interwoven in the story without being info dumpy. However, at times I did feel as though we did not have quite enough detail. I spent quite a lot of the book trying to figure out the gods, the demigod structure and all the different tribes in the city and it wasn't until I got to the end and discovered an appendix that explained it and stopped me being quite so confused. I think this would be an interesting book to reread before progressing on with the series once you understand how all of this is set up. I do think things would slot together a lot better. As much as I enjoyed the world building I did have quite a lot of questions about this world and quite major questions like the city of eternal siege it's like how how do they make enough food for people to eat if they're being constantly attacked by these greenbacks and also where are these greenbacks coming from there's just a never-ending stream of them i think i just wanted to know how it all worked together and just one other point there were times when the dialogue just felt a little bit stilted also some of the dialogue felt a little too modern but that was generally corthy's and i've got a feeling that that's something to do with his character and where he's from. I'm really interested to find out what the heck is going on. There is a lot of interesting stuff going on and I feel like we've only just scratched the surface. This series is massive. There's already so many books out in this series and I really just want to explore things further. So overall this was a fun start to what is really quite a massive series and there are a lot of interesting stories already developing. For SBFBO, I rated this 7.5 out of 10. So if you have read this, I would love to know your thoughts. Thanks for watching, and I shall see you all soon.